I'm sure you've seen the articles by now, and you may have even started to see those ads on the lock screen of your Nothing phone. But today, I can show you three different ways to remove this app from your device, and none of these methods that I show you here today will require root access. So let's take a look at this lock glimpse application. Not many people are aware, but the whole lock glimpse feature is actually handled by a single app within the Nothing operating system. And you can find that by first launching into the settings application, tapping on the lock screen, and then tapping into the lock glimpse feature from here. Now, before we actually disable and remove this app, it's a good idea to dive into the settings area and disable both toggles before you disable or uninstall it. Now, if we bring up the recents page and then tap on the app icon above this window, you can see there's actually a dedicated app called Lock Glimpse, and we can dive into the app info page for this specific app. So the first and easiest way of removing this app and preventing it from being opened and launched on your phone is to simply disable it from here. So we tap on that disable button, confirm we want to disable that app, and then we go back. Now this time when we open the settings, go into the lock screen, and then try to tap on the lock glimpse menu, we're going to be told that that app does not exist because you saw we just disabled it. That means the app cannot run, it cannot be launched, and that app will not be able to run in the background either. So no ads on your lock screen. But if you really want to remove lock glimpse from your device, then the Kanta Shizuku combination is a great way of handling that. And thankfully, I have already shown you how to install and set up both Shizuku as well as the Kanta applications. Again, neither of these apps require root access, and everything can be set up directly on the device without needing an external PC. So if you're not familiar with those two apps, or if you need some help setting those up on your device, then be sure to check below this video, and I'll have links to two dedicated guides that will get you caught up. If you remember, when we looked at the app info page for Lock Glimpse, we can see the package name at the bottom. So we're going to take that, we're going to open up Kanta after Shizuku has been set up, and then use the search at the top to search for the word lock screen. That should remove just about everything else in this list until you see lock glimpse from the results. Now we can tap on that checkbox, then tap on the trash can icon in the bottom right corner, and confirm if this is your first time using Kanta, you will need to grant it access to Shizuku. So that prompt will appear there. But as long as everything goes smoothly, you will see that lock glimpse app in the deleted tab within Kanta. And again, open up that settings app, dive into the lock screen menu, and then tap on lock glimpse to confirm that the app does not exist and cannot be launched on your device. If you have a spare PC with Google's ADB and Fastboot tools set up, then you don't need to bother with the whole Shizuku Kanta combination at all. You will need to have developer mode enabled on your phone, and you will then need to enable USB debugging mode from there. Lastly, You'll also have to have Google's platform tools installed or extracted onto your PC. But if you don't know what developer mode is, or if you aren't sure where USB debugging mode toggle is located, or if you need some help finding those Google platform tools, then again, be sure to look under this video in the video description and the pinned comment, and I'll have links to dedicated guides for all of those that will get you caught up. With that done, we're then going to connect the phone to the PC with a USB cable and then open up that folder where our ADB and Fastboot EXE files 
are located. You can see this is where my ADB and Fastboot tools are. And I like to press and hold the shift key on the keyboard and then right click on an empty spot within our ADB and Fastboot tools folder. This will give you a different looking context menu where you have an open in terminal or a open Windows PowerShell or open a command prompt option here. It doesn't matter which one of these you select, just pick one because they're basically all the same as long as they are launched within our ADB and Fastboot Tools folder. Let's use the ADB devices command to make sure the phone is connected to the PC. So we type out the command ADB space devices and press enter. As long as you get the serial number for that device here and are not told that your computer is waiting for a device or that this is a blank response, if you see that it's waiting for a device or if you see that it's a blank response, then you will need to fix the USB related issue with your setup. That could be a faulty USB cable or ADB wanting you to use a different USB port. You may even just need to authorize that USB debugging connection on your phone. So using the revoke USB debugging authorizations option from within the developer options menu could help to re-trigger this command. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop into a shell prompt with our device. So type out the command ADB space shell and press enter. That's gonna drop you to a different command prompt with the code name of your device right there. We're gonna type out this command, pm space uninstall space dash k space dash dash user space zero space and then the package name that you want to uninstall. And once you have the package name typed out correctly, that's com.vilykke dot lock screen. We press enter on the keyboard. And as long as you get a success message here, that means the command was executed correctly. Now what we're doing is we're telling the Android's package manager service to uninstall this specific application and we're uninstalling that from user zero, which is the default user account. And we're telling it dash K to keep the user data just in case. And just like before, I recommend you opening up the settings application, diving back into the lock screen section and trying to open up that lock glimpse application. And just like before, if you're told that the app does not exist, then that means it has been successfully uninstalled. Not only will that prevent the app from being launched, but it also blocks it from running in the background. As far as Android is concerned, there's not much of a difference between these three methods that I showed you here today. Kanta and ADB technically do the same thing, just in different ways, and disabling it, again, prevents that app from being launched and it will not be allowed to run in the background. So honestly, if you're looking for the easiest method to follow, then just disable the Lock Glimpse app and be done with it. But I do want to point out that firmware updates can bring this app back if the over-the-air update itself contains a new app update within the firmware. So when you go to install that next version of Nothing OS, whether it's for security patches or the next new big version, then it's a good idea to check and see if that lock glimpse app has been reinstalled by again going into the lock screen section and tapping on that setting.